Jeanette Yi, your perinatal athletic therapist. And today we are talking about compression garments, specifically how that can shorten your C-section recovery time or cesarean recovery time. So thank you so much for being here. If this is your first workshop with me, I do have to say that I'm glad you found, I'm glad you found each other. I'm here live every Monday, except for statutory holidays. And the reason for that is because I think there's such a massive gap in women's healthcare, not just here in Canada, but around the world. And when it comes to something like postpartum rehabilitation, and even more specifically, C-section rehabilitation, there's just such a massive gap. So I'm here to teach all of you and show all of you the simple things that you can do that will make a massive improvement in your recovery. These are not rocket science things. I'm going to share with you things that I think should be standard of care coming out of that surgery. So until I get to change what women's health is going to look like from a, from a hospital level of things and from actual system change, I'm just going to keep running my Instagram and TikTok lives. So thank you so much for coming. Friends, the topic of today's live is how a compression garment will shorten your cesarean birth recovery. A compression garment is not the same as an ab wrap. So some of you might be thinking, oh, you know, I got one of these things from the hospital or I've heard about this thing that can wrap around my body that's going to help my abs heal, whether you had a cesarean or a vaginal birth. And that's not what we're talking about today. So if you were here for this workshop, I think it was four weeks ago, I ran a workshop about ab wraps versus compression garments. We're not talking about ab wraps today. We're talking specifically about compression garments, which is one of those things that honestly, I didn't even hear about until only a few years ago. So well after I had had my babies, this is something I wish I knew. So I'm going to make sure that you all know about it. All right. So before we get started, I want to know who you are. So can you put into the comments, I want to know exactly if you're pregnant or postpartum, and then also how far along you are. So how many you know weeks pregnant you are, or how many weeks, months, years post cesarean or post vaginal birth you are. Because you know what? Postpartum compression garments really do help both populations of vaginal and cesarean birth or C-section birth. Okay, so let's see. And also tell me where you are in this world. Beauté is four weeks post cesarean. Okay, this is an amazing workshop if you don't have a compression garment because this will help you big time. Someone is two months postpartum, Kayana. Okay, don't be sad. Don't be sad face because there are reasons why this may or may not be helpful for you still, okay? Beauté is in the UK. Someone else is six and a half weeks. Three months postpartum from cesarean struggling with C-section overhang, Vancouver, BC. Thank you so much for telling me what you're hoping to get out of this workshop. So yes, we will cover what this compression garment can or might do for you, depending on the stage of healing that you're at. But then also, we also talk about the other options. I'm going to open up the floor for questions as well. Okay, Kasim is 36 weeks pregnant. <gasps> Amazing. Props to all the folks here who are pregnant and actually are trying to pick up knowledge for themselves. Again, compression garments, super helpful for vaginal and for cesarean birth. So I'm really glad that you're here being proactive. Instagram, I owe you an apology. My little holder broke yesterday. So you're crooked. So I'm, it's, and it keeps falling. This is on my Amazon list of things to buy. So I apologize. Instagram, if you fall down, I'll pick you up. I promise. <laughs> Let's see. Cloud, clouds and rain forever. Three months post cesarean. Who be doing 20 months and 21 weeks pregnant? Oh, see, this is good stuff. Megan is five weeks post cesarean. Kay Leah is 10 weeks post cesarean. Friends, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. And if you're just joining this and you and you stay for the whole recording and you're like, oh my God, this is an amazing workshop. So many people will get benefit from this. I want you, first of all, TikTok, if, if you, if you're like, oh, I need the whole recording of this. I want to review this workshop information. You got to join me over on Instagram. And the reason for that is because everything is saved on Instagram. It can't be saved on TikTok. So follow me at ask 
Jeanette. So it's the exact same handle as my TikTok handle. So let's get on to this. I want to know, for those of you who have already birthed, can you put into the comments, what did you use after you had your baby? After, after childbirth, did you use an ab wrap? Again, did you use one of these? Something similar? Did you use a compression garment? Both or neither? So put into the comments, ab wrap, compression garment, both or neither. And I can tell you what I used. I used an ab wrap after my two vaginal births because I didn't know that there was another option. I really want you to know about compression garments because I, I wish I knew. So Megan on Instagram saying I use an ab binder, right? An ab wrap. Amazing. Good. What else? Someone on TikTok. Oh, many people on TikTok are writing in none. I wasn't given any information. So nothing. I haven't had used anything yet. I have a hematoma. Okay. So there are reasons why people don't use any types of compression, whether they are told by their medical um, staff not to, for various reasons. That's totally cool. You should listen to your medical provider and not just Jeanette Yee on, you know, social media because they know your body case by case. And that's very important. All right. So let's see. Emirth on Instagram, neither. Just moisturizing with oil and lotion. None. I had no information about it. Let's get started. Okay. So friends, everything here, I want you all to know if you never learned anything about how to care for your body after vaginal or C-section birth, it is okay. It's not too late. It is not too late. And, and if you're pregnant, this is the best time for you to be learning about this information. The second best time to be learning about this information is right now. Okay. It's never too late. So I'm really, really glad. Okay. If you're just joining me, my name is Jeanette Yi. I am a perinatal athletic therapist. And today we are talking about postpartum compression garments. All right. What's a postpartum compression garment? So I'm wearing one and this one is by a company called SRC Health. Full transparency, I am a representative of their product. Why? Because it is excellent. It is the product I recommend to all of my patients, all my athletes, everyone who does my programs online. All right. It is excellent. You know, part of it is because it's a garment created by women for women. So it comes in 10 different sizes okay and not just four sizes which is like the standard of most other things maybe for you know clothing but i need you to understand women's bodies come in many different sizes like i'm wearing a small but there is something that goes to triple xs and i think it's quadruple xl so every body is different and nothing is wrong with your body if it doesn't fit the garment it's the garment that doesn't fit you you're perfect the way you are Y'all got that? Okay, okay. So compression garments is exactly that. It's a garment, so it's something you wear. I happen to be wearing shorts, but this comes in mini shorts, you know, longer shorts and even leggings. But the compression part is the, here, is the torso part. There's also a compression portion here between my legs. So the pelvic floor. Compression just means that it's a gentle kind of squeeze. Yeah, gentle squeeze. This is not preventing me from moving or breathing or anything else, but it's tight enough that if I did move, that it stays in place. Why do we need a compression garment? For the biggest reasons that it protects your healing abdominals, especially after C-section or major abdominal surgery. Okay, you really want to have protection. And then, of course, it's going to decrease that swelling. And why is this important? Well, it's the swelling causes a lot of pain. Yeah, the swelling causes in the early days a C section shelf, right? That kind of overhang appearance. And swelling prevents you from connecting your brain to those abdominal muscles again. And I know you want to rehabilitate those muscles and be able to exercise and move again with no pain. That's why compression garment is so important. So I, I, want, I want you to understand that 
for those of you who are, you know, writing in and going, oh my God, it's already been months and months and I've never worn a compression garment or any compression at all. It's too late. I want you to understand something. Our bodies heal in spite of us. And thank goodness, because we're so busy trying to care for a newborn. We're so busy not sleeping. So we're not really having a chance to really focus on what our own bodies need, right? So because our bodies heal in spite of us, what ends up happening is this. This compression garment or compression strategy shortens your recovery time. If you don't use a compression garment, it just lengthens your recovery time. But eventually, you know, we all meet at the same point. All right. So just know that it's it's not a bad thing. And I've worked with many moms who haven't used compression garments. So I want to just kind of share a story of actually, I'm wondering if this will work. Because so I'm going to share a picture here. I wonder if this will work on Instagram. <gasps> It'll work. Okay. So Instagram, give me a bunch of thumbs up if you see this vertical incision. TikTok, unfortunately, I can't share this. TikTok, if you're just joining me, hop over and join me on Instagram, which is Ask Jeanette. You will see uh, a picture that I want you. Somebody in the comments of Instagram, can you just thumbs up if you can see a picture of a vertical incision? Woo, thank you, Kalayla. Okay, okay. This mom who has a vertical incision, she actually had a myomectomy. Okay, myomectomy is basically a fibroid removal. In her case, she had a cyst that was almost five pounds. All right, so she ended up having basically an incision that was vertical for those of you on TikTok who can't see, but from past her belly button, above her belly button, right down almost to her pubic bone. Okay, a vertical incision is something I want you to see because it is particularly uh, a unique sort of surgery that requires more intentional healing meaning it, it, ha it has um, less room for error. You really want to do your scar massage, absolutely, because that gets stuck down to your linea alba a lot easier. And also, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of pattern. For Instagram, can you see? Just give me a bunch of hearts if you can see. Can you see how that incision almost makes like a Christmas tree sort of angle? Yeah? That's the fascia being pulled up. It, it's, it's tethered this way. So again, if you can't see TikTok, join me over on Instagram. I, I, I can't upload these pictures on, on an Insta or a TikTok live. But what I want you to also see is that she's pulling down her compression garment. She's been wearing compression. So please comment if you can see Instagram, how, like, how many months was she here? Maybe two months post surgery, just a few months. Can you see basically how flush her abdominals are like, you, there's not much swelling. Can you see that? So give me a bunch of hearts, Instagram, if you could see that. There's not a bunch of swelling. That's because she's wearing her compression garment. And was very shocking for me anyways, because I did her post cesarean, well, post surgical care completely virtually. She started doing her own scar massage even before the six week mark. Her surgeon was so shocked. They're like, Oh my gosh, this is healing so well. So Instagram, if you can see that, can you see how it's flush? If there's no swelling, can you put a bunch of hearts in there? Okay. All right. Can you see that? Okay. We get a bunch of hearts here on Instagram. So that's what I wanted to show you. That is what compression can do. Is it aesthetic? Yeah. Does she have a C-section shelf? No. Uh, granted, she has a vertical incision. You, but you can see how with that stretched skin from the cyst, you can see that there's stretched skin, right? But it is it is not very defined. It's pretty cool. Kalila's like, yeah, that's pretty interesting. All right. And there's someone who's new here. Can you start a binder and compression as soon as 10 days postpartum? We were just starting to talk about that. So you are not too late at all. Now, here is my question. How am I supposed to get rid of this picture? Now, let me see if I can... Uh, stop sharing. Oh, good. Instagram. There we are back again. So I want to start talking. Any questions about, okay. Are you like, yeah, got it. I'm going to do some compression. Okay. I see some hearts on Instagram. You're like, yeah, I'm going to start with some compression. Compression garment pros and cons. So let's start into that. 
Um, okay. Again, this brand is the SRC Health brand. There are probably other brands out there, but I don't know about them. It doesn't mean that they're not available, right? So I'm not like, oh, you have to buy this one thing. Otherwise, you won't have a good recovery. No, but if you want to have an optimal recovery, this is the brand that I would recommend. There is a pelvic floor support as well as support all the way around. Okay, so let's talk about pros and cons, okay? Because I really want to answer one of these questions here on Instagram that says, like, when can you start wearing this? So let's talk about pros and cons. Actually, I'll answer that right now. Pros to an ab wrap. You can wear this starting day one and you should do compression starting day one as soon as you can. Okay. There are reasons why you wouldn't start it on day one, meaning it's too uncomfortable. The doctor has said, no, there are complications, et cetera. Maybe day two. Okay. Day three. But the sooner you can start compressing a new injury, the faster it will heal. Now you're going to have a lot of swelling. So getting an ab wrap on, see how well this wraps all the way around. I don't have to force it. That's going to be much easier to put on than a compression garment. So I'm just going to show you, okay? This requires effort to pull on. I didn't have surgery yesterday, but it's still an effort to pull on. So I need you to understand a con to a compression garment is it requires abdominal strength to put on. And it requires that, uh, you know, some of the more major swelling, it disappears or decreases before this will fit. And for the mom here, or actually, I think there were a few moms here who are pregnant currently. Yes, you can measure for a postpartum garment while you're pregnant. So you can measure it while you're pregnant. On the SRC Health website, it shows you exactly how to do that. All right, so, so please go ahead and do that. Now, now, once you can get this on, a, a lot of the moms that I work with virtually and in person, they say, I can start with one of these. And then once the compression helps decrease the swelling enough, I can put on one of these. Do you need one of these? No. But if you're like, well, what can I use instead, Jeanette? Go into your closet. Do you have a high-waisted yoga pant? And these are just regular yoga pants. High-waisted meaning it goes past my belly button. It has to go past my belly button to help with swelling. Why? Because you have to compress or squish the surgical area, meaning between your belly button and your pubic bone. This is your surgical area. This whole thing must be covered. So now here's another pro and con. The pro to compression garment is look, the whole surgical area is compressed, like right up to the top of my abdominal wall, like my abs, my ab muscles actually start at my sternum right here. And this compresses the whole darn thing. So that's a massive pro. Very, very few ab wraps do this. Here's the other pro. It stays compressed when I sit down, right? How many of you have an ab wrap and when, it's, when you sit down, the whole thing kind of rides up or rolls up? Listen, especially after cesarean, if it rolls up when you're sitting and think of all the hours you're sitting, it actually does more harm than good. Why? Because it's squishing the swelling from here and pushing it down into your surgical area. That is going to cause a lot more issues. And if you are feeling more pain wearing your ab wrap or your compression garment, you're right. It's because it's irritating you. Okay. Don't use it. It's either being used improperly or it's just not the right fit for your body. Again, Nothing's wrong with your body. It's the wrap that's not matching your body. Okay. I see on TikTok that it's making a lot of sense for everybody there. Okay. So if you're just joining me right now, my name is Jeanette Yi. I'm a perinatal athletic therapist. And today we're talking about compression garments after childbirth and how I can shorten your recovery time. So this is not just C-section related. It's vaginal birth related as well. All right. So... I know I'm getting, I'm getting so many comments here. Listen, I'm going to pause because I want to make sure I'm answering a couple of questions before I go into all the other details. Of them. I mean, I might answer them already. So I know the one question um, said, you know, when can you start? 
Yeah, you can start at 10 days postpartum. You start at day one. Okay, when does weight loss after birth usually plateau? This is Kayla, this question, it's very specific. It's very specific to so many things. And the biggest thing is rest. I'm not kidding you. How much sleep, how much quality sleep you're getting. And of course, there are other factors as well. And everybody is different. You know, breastfeeding doesn't necessarily help you lose weight. It, it might even help you keep on weight. So it's, it's very different for everybody. Some bodies lose weight quickly. Some bodies don't. Hormones play a big factor as well. Okay. And stress levels. Anna Darlene says, as a plus size woman, I tried to bind her, but it was too painful. And my C-section is below my stomach, left to right incisions. Yeah, horizontal incision. And, and Anna Darlene, you might want to try high-waisted yoga pants that you already have, as long as they go past your belly button or this amazing compression garment. If you want to check out the compression garment, friends, again, I am an ambassador for this particular brand. There are other brands out there, but if you're interested in checking out the SRC Health, just check the link in my bio. So I've got a discount code there as well. All right. So let me just make sure these comments. Okay. A specific question about how do I lose my tummy? Listen, compression helps. And it's not just an aesthetic thing. I know a lot of questions I get is, Jeanette, how do I lose my tummy? How do I flatten my tummy? My tummy is so big. I want to get it smaller. How do I get rid of this stomach after my C-section? As a therapist, firstly, I want you to know there is no shame in wanting to, you know, have a measurable improvement in this appearance of your abdominals. There's no shame in that. So if anyone's ever shamed you for that, or you feel self-shame and asking, please, this is a safe space. And I'm totally cool with that. Now, here's the really cool thing I want you to know. As a therapist, what your abdominals look like, especially in the first three months after surgery, tells me what you are doing that's helping your recovery and what you aren't doing that's not helping your recovery. So compression, folks, in the first few weeks, like up to the first six weeks after your surgery is going to help with that swelling. The swelling causes the C-section shelf in the first two months. It just does. There's a heck of a lot of swelling. And for the most part, we're not moving enough to cycle that swelling out. And it's, it actually hurts to move that much. So I hope that answers your question, right? I know it's kind of generalized, but compression from the very beginning, friends, compression from the very beginning. I'd like to draw an analogy. Anybody ever sprained their ankle before? Like really badly? Like, you know, when you sprain your ankle and your blows right up? Now, I broke my ankle. I've sprained my ankle many of times, but here's the first thing you do is you're like, oh, you like grab your ankle, you hold it, right? Compression. That body of yours tells you right away, I need this to be comp compressed because it, pardon me, excuse me, because it feels protected and supported, right? And then when you do compress it, that big swelling actually decreases within that first day. You keep that ankle wrapped for the first two days, feels so much better by day three. And depending on how, you know, slight or how severe your sprain is, I mean, it's going to improve your recovery. It's the same with a C-section or a cesarean birth. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. I'm just going to scroll through here to make sure I'm not losing any questions. So friends, if you're just joining me, especially there on TikTok, my name is Jeanette Yi. I'm a perinatal athletic therapist. And today we're talking about cesarean or and vaginal birth uh, compression garments. I'm wearing mine right now. So I'm going to scoot this down a bit so people can see like this is, this is regular pants height, but this comes all the way up. All right. Let's see. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. TikTok. Let me just take a look here. Jessica just joined in. Hi, Jessica. Becky's asking. Oh, great question, Becky. Is nine months postpartum too late to start with compression? I've had four C-section and never done anything like this. Becky, thank you for asking this question because that's going to move into our next section, which is, well, how, how long do we wear this? Like, what's, what's the program? Like, how long do we wear this? So friends on TikTok, especially if you missed the first half of this workshop, don't worry. The complete thing is recorded on my Instagram. So you're going to have to follow me there at Ask Jeanette. All right, so just make sure of that. Now, here's the thing, friends. Becky's asking a really great question. Becky, I'm going to ask a question back. 
at nine months post cesarean, what are you hoping to achieve with compression? Okay, what are you hoping to achieve with compression at nine months post cesarean, Becky? And this goes for anybody who's three months onwards, three months, four months, five months, you know, six years. If you're like, oh, shoot, I want to try compression. Tell me why. Okay, put it into the chat, TikTok, but also on Instagram, because here's the thing I want you to understand. Compression helps with swelling. After three months, you generally don't have swelling. You don't. Compression also helps with support of healing abdominals. So if your, your abs were cut through during that surgery, well, at three months, they're healed. Like they're not going to split open and you're not going to damage your, your incision by movement. But you might feel pain still, but you might feel supported when wearing compression. And these are for different reasons now. But you may feel like I have a C-section shelf and I want to improve the way this looks. Okay, now we're not talking about swelling anymore. Okay, so let me see. Let me see. Instagram, do we have any answers here? No. Becky, please tell me you're here and that you wrote it in. Thank you, Becky. Becky's like, I'm hoping to lessen the shelf. I had my cesarean four months down. I still can't pass the stool. Oh, that's okay. For Cherry, Cherry Blossom, please go connect with your physician about that. It's a little bit more than just you, you want to get some medical support with that, okay? Becky's like, and I want to strengthen the core. All right. So friends, this is a fantastic segue. And if you're just joining me here today, we are talking about how compression garments can help decrease your recovery time after cesarean specifically, but definitely after vaginal. Let me back up before I get to your question. Okay. When do you put this on? As soon as you can. Generally after a medicated birth, there's a lot of swelling because of the medication, not just like the surgery. So vaginal birth discounts too. I had, I had an epidural, my first vaginal birth, lots of swelling everywhere. This was not possible to get on. Abrap. Or, you know, an old pair of uh, high-waisted leggings that you already have, or even like pregnancy leggings. Okay. High-waisted. Next, get this on as soon as you can. Usually it happens within the first two weeks. All right, for a properly fitted compression garment. Vaginal birth months, you're going to have this on from day one or some kind of compression strategy from as, as close to day one as possible. And by the, and generally try to keep it on for the first two weeks, as like as much in that 24 hour period as you can. But from the two week mark onwards, start to wean yourself off. So by six weeks, you're pretty much off needing any kind of compression, okay? That's for vaginal birth. For cesarean birth moms, here's what I tell my students and my patients that work with me. Again, you try to get a compression garment or a compression strategy on as soon as you can. So day one, and then you want to keep this on as much as possible, like 24-7 as much as possible, including when you sleep, up until six weeks. But at the six week mark, you want to start to wean yourself off of any compression strategy so that by the three month mark, you don't need one. Okay. Now I know I'm leaving a lot of blanks in there. You're probably going to ask like, why, how can we tell? Oh my gosh, I didn't wear it for that long. Listen, every body is different. Every body is different. So please don't follow this guideline very rigidly. This is why it's so important to work with a therapist or a coach like myself who can help you look for, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, I need to keep wearing this garment because I don't have great core control because I still have a lot of pain when I try to get up out of the chair, get up out of bed and in the middle of the night. And this compression makes it feel more supported and decreases my pain. It helps me move. I have a toddler. I can't rest. I need more protection for longer right? I have twins. I have to lift a lot of baby weight, right? You will need compression for longer. It's a supportive, protective tool. All right. And some bodies heal quicker than others with the exact same surgery. So maybe by the four week mark post-surgery, you're like, I don't feel like I need this. This isn't decreasing my pain, nor is it increasing any feeling of support. But as you start to ease into exercise, because folks, if you're working with someone like myself, you start doing your core retraining exercises from day one. 
pain free. But as we start to build upon foundational core retraining exercises, one thing always happens. And this is not because you're pushing it. It's because this is just human nature. We push it too far and we hurt ourselves, right? And there's a setback for like, you know, a day, sometimes a week. This gives us more protection for those times that we might push ourselves too hard. Okay. So friends, here's the thing I want you to understand. First of all, any questions? Any questions? Again, Avzina's like, will it work after three months? Again, not for swelling. You won't have swelling after three months, right? And someone's like, I want to get rid of that C-section shelf. I need to tell you the swelling itself is not contributing to the C-section shelf at nine months anymore. But there are other things that are contributing to that C-section shelf, such as tight scar. By the way, a tight scar is a major reason why we have a C-section shelf appearance in those first weeks. It's swelling and a tight scar. After the three months, there's no swelling, but there might still be a tight scar. So to my friends who are three months post, compression garment, probably not gonna make a big difference. Although every body is different, right? So this is where I would need to do an assessment with you and ask you more specific questions about, hey, what has your scar massage been like? right? How does your scar move? Maybe it moves really well, even without scar massage. Hey, what is your core control? Can you actually do belly breathing? Can you engage your transverse abdominis while you move the rest of your body and breathe into your lower ribs? Or are you still breathing up here? This is what rehabilitation is all about. So please, if you are someone who's like, oh my gosh, I, I have this, I have the C-section shelf. I've never massaged my scar. My scar still hurts. I try to move it. It doesn't move. I haven't touched my scar. I haven't done any exercises. That's where a program will help, not a compression garment. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Good. Okay. I'm getting some hearts and some, okay. Becky's like, I wish I you heard of those years ago. Becca, don't worry, friends. You know, I totally want to acknowledge how frustrating this may be, but it's not too late. Becca, at nine months post cesarean, four cesareans, there's so much opportunity to retrain your core to be anything you want. Now, granted, you have four babies. So following a rehab program that takes five minutes a day is probably all you can do right now in terms of space and time, right, Becca? but I, I want to inspire you to try it. So if you're already working with a therapist, go and get that homework from that therapist. Say, what are the five minutes of exercises I need to do every day? And Becca, if you don't have a program you're following, consider mine. My cesarean recovery foundations program starts at $69 a month. And that's something that can make a massive difference in just a couple of months. So Becca, I really encourage you to look into a program like mine. It prints off an entire program of all the scar massages and all the exercises you want to do. Okay, and this goes for everybody. So if you are pregnant, you're like, oh, don't know if I'm going to have a cesarean or I do. Like, let's get started. That's the best time to do it. For those of you who were on earlier and saw that vertical incision, that woman who had the vertical incision started working with me when she was uh, pre-surgery. Again, if you weren't here, she had a five pound cyst in her body. She had a myomectomy, not a cesarean, but that vertical incision, she knew she was going to have one. And she started all of her, all of her core retraining exercises pre-surgery, which was tough to do because she had this big diastasis. She couldn't connect with her muscles. You know, that big cyst was in the way, but she hit the ground running right after her surgery. That's why following a program helps. So if you're curious about my Cesarean Recovery Foundations program, just click the link in the bio. It's, it's a program you just follow on your own. It's got every video of the scar massages and exercises you need. And no, it's not just for, oh, zero to six months postpartum. If I'm out of that, then, you know, rehab doesn't help. Of course it helps if you've never done it before. Okay, so that's in the link in my bio. Recommend the SRC silicone scar patches. If so, when to start using them? Okay, so silicone scar patches, I have no experience with. I actually recommended a different scar tape a while ago and they got discontinued. So silicone is not the same as fabric tape, 
fabric tape is stretchy and pulls scars together. Silicone does not. Silicone is thicker though and protects the scar more than tape itself, like fabric tape. But I had a lot of success with that fabric tape, Caitlin. So I'm not sure that that's going to help your answer, but you know what? Try it out. Try it out. Okay. So friends, if you have questions about the programs, if you have questions about this garment, this garment, by the way, the SRC Health Garment is something you can buy through the link in my bio. I have a 15% discount code. Okay, so if you're gonna pick one up, you might as well just use a coupon as well. All right. So friends, if, if you're here every Monday, I want you to know that I'm not gonna be here next Monday, but I'll be here again the Monday after. If you have questions I didn't get to answer, please follow me on Instagram, TikTok. My Instagram handle is Ask Jeanette. It's the exact same account handle. And in the stories, you'll see a spot that you can put in your question, okay? Because I will answer your questions tonight. If I didn't get to it today. Thank you so very much, everybody, for coming. And I'll see you in two weeks. Take care.